Hello, and welcome to another exciting Breakfast with Unity. I'm your host, Max Moreau, and I just got up, so I'm sorry. Um, I, uh, I actually didn't set my alarms this morning, and so I'm very thankful that I somehow managed to get up and still do the show. Anyway, so, um, what we're here today is finishing up that Collect Move script that we started yesterday. Um, and, uh, first off, I just wanted to say that, um, Salvador A. Mello, he, he gave me a couple tips yesterday. And one of them was, uh, did you know that there's a vector three dot move towards that works basically like quaternionated and dot rotate towards? I did not actually know this, and we're going to use it. It's going to be awesome. The other tip that he gave me on another video, which I don't have up right here, is that Audio Source has a has a function that you can call that will play a uh, audio uh, at a specific position, and you don't have to create like a temporary game object. Well, it, it actually kind of does that for you, but basically. It just creates one and then plays it and it stays for the life of the sound. And uh, that's really cool. I don't remember exactly what it was called. I think it was... Here, let's find it real quick. Uh, audio source dot play clip it point. Yeah. So that's one that I'm going to be using later in my life. So um, anyway, what we're doing this morning is we're making this thing actually work. So our problem before was we were doing a move towards method. And honestly, we actually probably didn't even want that. Uh, let's open up the level real quick. Uh, what we got kind of sort of working was uh, you can basically click in a position and it rotates towards it and starts going towards it. And um, we have some bugs where if you like click the opposite thing, you just automatically go there because it thinks it's already at the point. And, um, and we're going to actually change how this works because like almost any of the RPGs you play don't actually do this like tank style controlling for this. Uh, what they instead do is they they usually immediately snap the rotation. But we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're going to rotate and walk in the direction that we're going at the same time. And so we're going to it's gonna simplify this code a bit, and we're gonna use that a wonderful little vector three dot move towards four because we already have rotate towards right here, which is which is what we want, and we're going to use move towards in the same same way. So um, so that will significantly change this code. Since that's the case, I'm going to just very quickly... I just realized I didn't check this in yesterday, did I? Hold on, just double check this because I don't want to have to... want to mess this up. Um, breakfast with you. Yeah, I did not check this stuff in. Let me just do that real quick. Click to move part one. All right. So now that that's checked in, we can start making our changes. So um, this is checked in. Uh, I'm not gonna just delete everything. We'll just we'll mark it down. So um, we still want the input dot mouse down where we set the target position and stuff. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be changing this section. We're just gonna do a little mass comment out there. And what we're gonna change it to is we're gonna change it to transform dot position plus equals, or actually equals, uh, uh, vector three dot move towards, and we take our transform dot position, we take our transform dot, um, oh, sorry, transform dot position, we take target position, and Max degrees delta is the, or max distance delta is movement speed. Not 1.0, but movement speed. And we might be done. <laughs> yep, well, I did something wrong. Um, name, new position does not exist in this context. Okay, so we still need target position minus new position. So, we still need new position. One of those keys. Save. There we go. Hit play. And oh, forgot one thing. Important thingy. So what we want is we want times time dot delta time. We're moving sixty times faster than we wanted to. Hit play and. There we go. So you see that it goes to the location and then, um, it, and while you're going, it rotates. 
So um, what we're going to do is we're going to make it a little bit less slidey um, just by changing the values here. We're going to go to the player here and let's adjust them so that they have three movement speed is fine, but let's make the rotation speed much higher. There we go. And that looks like it's pivoting and moving at the same time, which is awesome. Looks a little weird when you go 180 degrees, but you know, honestly, if a character was doing that, it wouldn't look that strange, especially if they were anim animating. Though, um, but yeah, so so that's working. Now we still have this little problem. Um, if we get to a, a location, it just starts spewing out look rotation viewing vector is zero, and so uh, what that means is. We're trying to view in a direction that has a zero length, and so it doesn't know what to do at that point. So we're just going to put a final if statement if we're going to do target position minus new position. Actually, let's do this as a separate thing. Uh, vector three um, uh, look direction equals target position minus new position. We're going to grab this look direction and we're going to go if look direction does not equal or look direction dot magnitude does not equal zero. And actually, since we just care about the zero, we can actually do square magnitude here dot square magnitude. And in that case, we do this. And we can get rid of this stuff now. So, and because we called this look direction, we can now put this in this position. Save us one more, one more uh, subtraction. Not that subtractions are extremely expensive, but you know, it's just one one less thing. There we go, and we should no longer get the viewing angle is zero thing. All right. So, it's been eight minutes. Usually the show's around 15. Do I dig myself into a hole and do some more stuff? Or do we just, uh... Or do we just call this a day? Um... So, let's do one more thing. So, uh, let's create uh, some walls in this area. Let's pretend that we're playing, um... A Diablo-ish game like we kind of are and make some walls so I'm just gonna make this cube let's see 10 not the other 10 and the other completely other 10 the, one more all right so let's make this four high five high whatever and um, let's make it uh, t uh, 10 units long 15 years long and let's uh, duplicate this and put it on the other side and duplicate it again and rotate it and just kind of box in the, the arena here and the reason I'm doing this is because I want to demonstrate and actually I'm going to move all of them up a bit like up 2.5 all right, so we've got a bunch of walls here. We hit play. So our problem here is, and actually this is not the best angle. Let me, let me, let's adjust our camera a little bit more. So we're going to pull the camera back. Um, actually, let's, you know, pull it back a little. Maybe even put it down a little bit. Okay, well, this is a bad example, but basically, um, there's situations where you would be able to, in say a Diablo game, you'd be able to move below the wall um, at certain angles. Here, actually, let's uh, let's see what we can do with this. That didn't help. Okay, whatever. So right now, if we hit play, um, we've got some interesting problems because we can. Um, if we hit play and we click and move, we can click on things that really aren't the ground and you'll move to them. 
And uh, additionally, if uh, if we click, yeah, you see how it's doing all that. It's kind of cool. Maybe maybe we want a game where you can like tell a cube to float into the air in whatever place you click. But that's not what our game is. So um, let's fix that. It's very easy. Um, we already have it set up to do this. So we have this um, layer movement layer. So we're gonna call this. Uh, I'm gonna create a new layer. We're gonna call it. Um, movement layer and um, we're going to just choose nothing and then choose movement layer and then we're going to go to our playing and set it to the movement layer and so now when we hit play we go to the location we click here but if we click outside of it nothing happens additionally um, if we as I said if like I was trying to do with the camera earlier which I think I'm failing at pretty badly Let's just check it out again here. I'm going to change the angle that way. Maybe that'll help. And we'll go this way and this way. So now we have kind of, it shows that uh, we have kind of an obscured area here. Um, if we click where we could move, we still move there. And it's valid. Watch. If we go to the, the scene, you can see that the cube is just hiding behind the wall. And so, so now, it, it, now we can't see where the cube went. So, like most games, highlight the character or something in some way in this scenario. But at the very least, you can see that it works even if your character is being occluded by something, or if you had like other geometry on the scene, this stuff would work for you. So, so this is how you set up a basic uh, movement uh, thing for a click to move style game. And thank you very much for watching. Um, you guys have a great one. And I will see you guys uh, tomorrow with another Breakfast with Unity and uh, also with a Cooking with Unity episode. Uh, so have a good one and uh, see you guys around.